Hi, this is Zach here with the pre-market edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Tuesday, the 2nd of January. It's pre-market edition because I'm off to see my mother-in-law this morning, so uh, I'm sure that Les Dawson would be proud. Starting off with the FTSE 100, and uh, here we didn't quite get up to the uh, 78.10 level by the end of December, by the end of 2023, but uh, while we're above that broken February resistance line, 76.30 from last year, still the chance of getting up to that 78.10 level during January, break of 78.10, and we're looking at uh, that April resistance line projection, and I suppose last year's highs towards 80.50. 200-day uh, moving average starting to curl up, which is nice, as that is joining the 50-day line rising, which gives us more hope that we will take out 78.00, etc., etc. Moving on to the DAX, and uh, here you can see that uh, still in that con consolidation after that very impressive rally from the end of October, the support recently around 66,600. We were allowed down to 66,500 as that was the old July peak. Um, otherwise, above the uh, resistance line projection at the top of that triangle from back in May at 16,900, we're looking for up to 18,000 by the end of this month. Maybe that's a bit optimistic, but uh, the consolidation so far very uh, positive indeed. And obviously, we're in the aftermath of that golden cross between their 50 and 200 day lines by, uh, back at the end of last month. Moving on to the Dow, which has been the star of the show, along with the NASDAQ, etc. Here, we're just shy of that resistance line target there, 37,900. I think the peak so far, about 100, 150 points short, but uh, looking for 37,900 within that rising trend channel from the beginning of October. Best case scenario by the end of next month. 39,300 at the top of that channel. Might be quicker than that, but uh, we need to stay above recent support around the 36,700 level in the floor of that channel to make that happen. Moving on to Bitcoin, which obviously had a stellar year, uh, especially in the second half of last year. Uh, current position is that we are um, still trying to establish the floor of that channel. Looks like we're still in that rising trend channel from October. Obviously, it's sort of sliding around a bit, um, but above the uh, 40,000 area looking for progress up towards the top of that October channel at 50,000 plus, and that could be seen by the end of this month. Resistance line was broken there from December, but then we went into a sort of sideways mode. But the fact that we were remaining above that rising 50-day line is very strong and very impressive and suggests that this is a, a mid-move consolidation ahead of a new move to the upside. Nightmare scenario at the moment is that we break the 50-day line at 40,300 and have to test 38,000. But at the moment, that doesn't look as though that's on the cards, given the way the RSI has just bounced off neutral 50. Moving on to the stocks and quite a selection. I suppose people are inundated at the moment off with all the uh, New Year tips. But uh, here we have uh, Allergy and uh, Allergy doing what I call sideways shuffle above a rising 50-day line. Uh, just was about to break out of the recent consolidation through 2.5 at the end of the year. We're looking for up to three and a half pence by the end of this month if everything goes well and we stay above the uh, on the right side of two pence on that one. Haven't looked at uh, the following stock for quite a while, but uh, it looks quite appealing at the moment. Uh, Argentex. Here you can see that we've got this uh, basically inverted head and shoulders with an extended right hand shoulder, bounced off the 50 day line and then broke the neckline resistance around 83 pence above that. We're looking for the uh, October, September, October resistance and the 200 day line at 106 pence as soon as the end of this month. The rally started with bullish divergence. Uh, that was back in November and so has a good look to it with the bear trap rebound that we had at that time. Moving on to a stock which uh, carries the hopes and dreams of many, Audio Boom, especially those who are in um, above uh, 10 pounds or even uh, 20 pounds on this situation. A uh, nice sort of U-shaped, saucer-shaped turnaround here, slow burn recovery, which is uh, normally a good thing. Uh, recent support around the uh, two, well, the upper 260s. Above that, we're looking for a new leg to the upside as high as £3.80 by the end of this month, especially while we remain above that old target area around uh, 280 Next stock is uh, Brighton Pier, and uh, here the shares have behaved themselves quite well in the recent past. Uh, we had the uh, bullish divergence turnaround there with a strong candle on the uh, what's that, the 5th of uh, December. Since then, we've got a sort of double V-shaped uh, bull flag and a breakout there through the uh, middle December resistance at 53 pence. But the view here is that while we're above the previous target, 49, we're looking for as high as 66 pence by the end of this month. That would obviously close the gap down that we had back in July. 
Brad Ahead's been a rather tiresome and tedious situation over the recent past. You can see the chart's only gone one way, like many of its peers. But uh, the situation now looking rather good for the start of the year in the sense that we had a gap down back in December. Gap high, with well, the beginning of September, gap higher for the end of December. And uh, looking for a push higher through that resistance line there from November around the uh, 1.9 pence level. Above that, on an end-of-day close basis, we're looking for 2.7 pence as soon as the end of this month. The reason for the relative enthusiasm, apart from the bullish divergence there right at the end of the with the lower lows there, 1.6 pence is that we've had a bear trap island reversal, so gapping down and then gapping up after hitting new lows suggests an overshoot. Cavendish is next, and uh, here uh, we've uh, hit all our targets. Uh, we hit the initial the original target there around 10 pence. The next one was uh, up to 12 pence, so we're obviously fishing around for something uh, better. Uh, current view is that um, we're probably heading up towards the area of that gap down back in November last year. Uh, back, in fact, November 22 at 18 pence, and that's valid while we hold above the 10 pence area. The uh, technicals on that, probably the line that I've just drawn there now, uh, which hopefully will be hit, as I said, by the end of next month. On to Cadence, which had a good end of the week on a decent RNS, and uh, here you can see that uh, the shares are trying to uh, basically bounce off that four, that area just under five pence, four point eight pence, double bottom there above that, looking for seven or eight pence by the end of this month within that uh, broadening triangle base. Above 8, looking for 12, but uh, maybe that's uh, about for the end of next month if everything goes well. If you're cautious, you wait for an end-of-day close back above the 50-day moving average at 6 pence. Moving on to uh, DG Innovate, which uh, narrowly uh, um, managed to uh, break our uh, best-case scenario target, 0.19. Above 0.19, we're looking for a fresh move to the upside here and uh, looking for a target as high as 0.4 pence by the end of next month. The uh, backing for that, uh, not only the bear trap gap reversal that we had, in fact, it was at bear trap island reversal, gap down in June and then gapped up in December, but also we're backed by the uh, golden cross that we had at the end of uh, last month, golden cross buy signal between the 50 and 200 day moving averages. Upside valid while we're, at least while we're above the uh, recent swing low there at 0.13. On to a stock which uh, is a bit of a surprise inclusion here, uh, Eco Atlantic. But uh, we've got uh, one of the best signals that we had for uh, last year on many stocks was uh, Sideways Shuffle uh, along a rising 50 day moving average. And that's just what we've got here with Eco Atlantic above that 50 day line at uh, 10 and a half pence, looking for at least uh, 12 and a half pence by the end of this month. Best case would be up to the 200 day moving average at 15p by the end of this month. But the key here is holding above that 10 pence area. Good to see that uh, Empire Metals was uh, up in lights in the uh, Daily Mail uh, yesterday or over the weekend. Um, interesting that uh, 9p, the, the call there, probably about 7 pence uh, too late, but I suppose what's 7 pence between friends, especially if this is going to be the uh, big stock that it looks as though it will be. Uh, current position is that while we're above the 50-day moving average area at 8 pence, we're looking up to 15 pence as soon as the end of next month. If you're cautious, maybe wait for just a, an end of day close back above 10 pence as we've had resistance just below that level of late. For Expos next, it's a homage to uh, one of the uh, Twitterati. And here you can see that uh, the shares ended the year on a high in terms of uh, a gap higher through the 200 day moving average at uh, 89 pence. Above 89 pence, we're looking for 105 as soon as the end of next month after the uh, gap and with the 50-day moving average now rising sharply off the lows. But the key here is that we don't trade back below the gap there at 86 pence. Moving along to uh, a stock which has been quite a regular here, a Hummingbird Resources, and hopefully you'll feel the benefit of uh, some of the gold price strength. A rising trend channel base here above the uh, 9 pence level, looking for 14 pence as soon as the end of next month. Obviously, we're cautious. Wait for a clearance of 11 pence, uh, even though the 50-day line is now rising and should help. And also the 50-day, uh, the 50 RSI as well, the 50-level RSI, as we're just below that at the moment. Haven't heard from Hemogenics for a while. Maybe it's uh, due a uh, an update. Uh, here we've got a rising trend channel base. The floor of the channel there at 1.95 pence with the 200-day line. And above that, we're looking for a retest of 3 pence, perhaps as soon as the end of this month. 
I3 Energy was one of the uh, stocks for 2024 uh, with myself and others as well. Here we ended the year on a high note in terms of breaking through the 50-day moving average and above neckline resistance there at 10 and 3 quarter pence. We've also had lots of direct buying at and below current level, so that does uh, suggest some value there. Above the 10 pence area, looking for up to uh, 17 or 18 pence by the end of next month after that double bear trap and the bullish divergence that accompanied it last month. IQAI is next. Uh, couldn't resist this one either. Here we, you can see that uh, we've got a V-shaped bull flag above a rising 50-day moving average. So hopefully that is a strong leading indicator of a move up towards the top of that rising trend channel from February. That's currently pointing at 6.5 pence and we're looking for that as soon as the end of this month. Uh, welcome return from Oriel Resources, and uh, here you can see why. We've had um, a bear trap island reversal, so gapping down in September, double gap higher in November, and then another gap for red December. You could almost argue that uh, the stock couldn't uh, actually go up much faster than it is at the moment with those gaps there. Target here, while we're above the 200-day line at 0.14, is up to 0.24 as soon as the end of next month, but that looks like a very good chart indeed. Uh, Panther Metals is next, and uh, hopefully it will have a, uh, a better year than it had last year, and all the junior miners or junior explorers had. Uh, here you can see that uh, a bit similar to Oriel in the sense that we've got a rising 200-day line, rising 50-day line, and looking for the shares to remain above the three and a quarter pence area and head up to at least four and a quarter initially by the end of this month. Bigger picture target by the end of next month may be up to as high as uh, five and a quarter pence, but uh, let's just go for four and a quarter at this stage and hope that that bear trap island reversal at the beginning of last month is a strong signal. It already has been anyway. On to the last two, and the one that uh, looks exciting from a charting perspective is Tiny Build. Here we had um, that uh, setup that we enjoy, the uh, bear trap island reversal, so gapping down making new lows and then gapping up again. Uh, the view now is that uh, at least while we're above uh, the top of the gap, around 3.7 pence, we're looking for at least the shares to fill the gap up to 6 pence over the course of January and maybe much more. I, in fact, it really should be much more with such a good setup there. Only back below, I suppose, 3 pence, really questioning the recovery argument. Finishing off with the Westminster Group, and uh, here, always nice to see the bears uh, get a punch in the face as they've uh, persistently uh, hit this company. Here we've got rising 50 and 200-day lines, which suggests that we're in the run-up to a golden cross, hopefully later this month. Above the 200-day line at 1.4 pence, looking for up to uh, 2.1 pence by the end of January, and maybe much more after that bear trap and uh, the unfilled gap to the upside that we had back in November. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.